Welcome along to my new kitchen. This is my first ever recipe video that I'm making here in the kitchen, so I'm very excited. Welcome in, grab a cup of tea. Um, I am gonna show you how to get the best out of your Christmas turkey this year. So the first thing is, if you're using a fresh turkey, make sure you take it out of the fridge at least an hour before you start prepping it, before it goes into the oven. It'll loosen it up and make it a lot more tender when you have that first slice. If it's a frozen turkey, defrost it in the fridge. You need 24 hours for every two kilos. Um, also, if you can try to get a really good turkey, um, mine is from Piper's Farm. They deliver all across the UK. You can get them in your lovely local butcher, the best quality one you can get. Um, and then the first thing I do is I get my roasting tray, a big enough one, and I make a vegetable trivet because if you think of in the oven, the heat circulates like this. So anything that's at the bottom is gonna permeate and is gonna flavor your turkey. So I have got a garlic bulb, which I've cut and sliced in half, which I'm popping in. I've got a couple of carrots, which I'm popping down. I've got some red onion, but you could use white onion or shallots. Um, I've got some lovely celery, because I love that flavor. And I've got some lovely fresh thyme. And so that basically is your trivet, okay? And then the turkey is going to sit on that. So in goes the turkey. Now, I've already cleaned my turkey, so I've cleaned it and I've dried it out. I've cleaned out the cavity. In most turkeys that you get, you'll also get the giblets. Don't throw them away, they are so delicious, but you don't want them in the cavity while you're roasting. So you take them out and you'll use them for stock to make a delicious gravy. And I'm gonna do another recipe video over the next couple of days, how to make turkey gravy, and you'll need your giblets for that. Now, I'm gonna pop in some salt. It's gonna be a lot of hand washing in this one, so I'm using handling raw meat. But So you get your salt, in goes the salt. And you just want to pepper and salt up all of your turkey. This is where you need four hands. So I'll pop it at the top and then I'll shake it down. So lots of salt and pepper, and obviously it's all cleaned out. If you are stuffing your turkey, I would do that now. And I usually put the stuffing into my turkey for Christmas day. And I would put in half of the cavity. Don't fill the whole cavity with stuffing, you'd only fill it halfway because it needs a space to circulate the air. So if your cavity is full, the turkey won't cook properly because that hot air goes into the cavity and it actually cooks from within. So on you go, turkey, onto the trivet like that, salt and pepper it up. And then next, I'm gonna make a delicious orange and sage butter that I'm gonna smear all over the turkey. So I'm making a beautiful sage and orange butter and I'm going to smear it inside my turkey and all over the turkey to create beautiful flavours. So I've got some fresh sage, it's about a tablespoon worth of, I chop it up really really finely. Mind your fingers, sharp knife alert. Okay. You could do this with thyme or you could do it with rosemary. In fact, rosemary would be really, really delicious. But my favorite flavor at Christmas time, herb wise anyhow, is fresh sage. So I've got some butter here, which I've had out of the fridge for a little bit, so it's softening up. I put my sage on top of that. And then next then is the zest of one orange. Mmm, got the smell of it, it's so Christmassy. You could use clementines as well. Um, they would give a beautiful flavour, but the orange is just a little bit stronger in flavour. And you get a lot more zest out of one orange. <laughs> You'd need a lot of clementines to do the zest in this. Okay, that is nearly there. Okay, don't throw this away because we're going to use this as well. I know you wouldn't throw it away anyway. We're going to use this in the turkey. Now with the back of a spoon, what you want to do then is just push down the butter and you just smear it all together to make this beautiful green and orange butter. The flavour is so beautiful. So the orange and sage butter is done. Now next is not for the faint hearted. You've got to laugh, okay, at me. Um, okay, I do this every year and Clean hands, you're going up the back of the turkey because <laughs> it's the 
only way to get the butter in. So this is the back of the turkey and you've got to loosen it up, which I did do just a second ago off camera because I couldn't show you everything. Um, so I just loosened it up with my hands and a knife. And then using your hands, you can wash them afterwards. You just push up the skin. <laughs> So you're making two little pockets um, like here. I just I remember growing up and my mother doing this, you know, on Christmas morning. And so I don't find anything wrong with doing that. I know a lot of you will be squeamish, but you just have to do it. Now, wash your hands. And then we're going to put that beautiful butter up those little pockets. And I promise you, if you do this, it will make such a difference to your turkey. So you pop a blob up, right? And so using your hands, you just push the butter all along the breast there. And what will happen is all the flavor from the sage and the orange will go straight into the meat of the turkey. And so it really helps make it lovely and juicy and tender and flavorsome and less dry. So in goes a little bit more and they're all full and then that job that job is done and then the rest is quite fun kind of like a painting job so the rest of it put into two hands and just give your turkey a little massage give it lots of love pop it around this is also going to you know drizzle off with all of the juices that i'm going to use as a stock to make the best gravy okay now next i'm going to wrap my turkey in delicious slices of parma ham so i do one side of the breast first and what this will do is add so much gorgeous flavor from the parma ham into the turkey it'll make it moister it'll season it and it'll bring such beautiful flavor to it oh a lot of people use bacon you know and you have to stretch out the bacon with a knife but i promise you this is my biggest tip is the parma ham wrapped around here it just adds so much flavor and you don't have to do any stretching with your knife of the bacon i wrap it around the legs as well up here like that We've got two left. Where can I fit these guys in? And oh, that one can go down here again, like so. And then the last one. Okay, and I've got a bit of orange left over. So I'm gonna pop an orange sliced up. That's the one I zested, do you remember? And I'm gonna put some sage as well in here because that will really infuse everything. I'm gonna pop some oranges in here and oranges down the sides give it lots of moisture and flavor and I've got two little bits and I'm just going to pop into the side here and now my turkey is oven ready so my oven which I have preheated is at 200 degrees celsius fan oven i'm going to have that in there for 45 minutes and then i'm going to reduce it down to 160 degrees celsius fan now all the cooking instructions exactly the weight of your turkey are below it's finally out of the oven all of the roasting times and temperatures are below doesn't this look beautiful the smells of the parma ham and the sage and the orange are just divine. I know that meat inside is going to be deliciously moist. I've dressed it up with lots of herbs and some clementines to make it look pretty. So I hope that this helps make your Christmas lunch even more delicious.